Hey everyone, it's Connor here and welcome back to another video. I hope you're doing well. And we've got quite a, a complex video here. This is quite a, an interesting case. As you can see, there's some very, very black debris in the ear, which is likely to be old wax and maybe probably a little bit of dried blood. Uh, and it's in this V-shaped configuration. So I'm very luckily able to kind of push the wax to the side and look through with the endoscope. And we can see an eardrum back there. Um, but there is a heavy amount of retraction, uh, which I'll explain about in a moment, but that is a, a noted complication of the case. Uh, there's also a fungal infection back there, which is lurking just behind this debris. So uh, I'm just adjusting the light here. Typically, if you ever see me adjusting the light, uh, you know, the exposure settings, then really what I'm doing is I'm trying to look at one specific thing. So I'm usually trying to look through a gap or look at an area of darkness. Um, and that, again, that's one of the advantages of, of, of using an endoscope is you can actually go right in and, and examine everything and you can change the light if you need to. But uh, there's the fungal debris. See all that white furry stuff growing on the ear canal? So that's, uh, that's what we call the hyphae of the fungus. So our hy the hyphae is like these little white kind of filamentous kind of wispy bits. So anyway, now normally I wouldn't really remove this debris you know, it's, it's clearly not blocking the ear canal. It's in a nice V-shaped configuration. There's a nice gap in the middle. And, you know, in order to remove this debris, which is, as you can see, very clearly adhered to the ear canal, it's very dry and crusty and hard, which is going to be a difficult job. Normally, I would say to the patient, well, you know, use some olive oil for five or six days and you should be fine. You know, it'll, it'll come out. And if it doesn't fine, then I can go in and suck it out and it'll be an easy job. However, um, the, the patient's doctor has specifically asked me to remove this debris. So uh, the case history to this is that a couple of weeks ago, uh, the patient had blood coming out of their ear. Um, minimal pain, but there was blood and the patient panicked and you know, ran to see their doctor. And the doctor, suspecting a perforation, looked in the ear and couldn't see anything. You know, they, they're, they're suspecting a perforation of the eardrum. Um, uh, but they can't see, so they've asked the patient, you know, they've sent the patient to me so I can remove this debris and then we can confirm whether or not the eardrum is, is damaged. Um, and that's a, f a fair suspicion, right? I mean, blood doesn't just randomly pour out of the ear, right? I say pour, there wasn't that much. But, um, you know, an eardrum, a perforation of the eardrum is a fair suspicion. Um, however, as, you know, you may have seen early in the video, but even before hitting record, I shoved the endoscope right in and had a good look at the eardrum and there's no perforation. There's just a lot of retraction. So I'm fairly confident that the, you know, the, you know, the, the, there is no, you know, horrendous complication there. The source of the blood, why was his ear bleeding? I'm not entirely sure about that. Um, it's quite possible that, you know, this wax is pretty deep and, and, you know, the, the formation, the kind of crusty formation around the ear canal is suspicious. So it may be that he shoved a, a fingernail in or used a cotton bud and he's, he's kind of grazed, you know, lacerated the skin of the ear canal and that's probably where the blood came from. And of course, even if you just see a little bit of blood coming from an area where it's not supposed to bleed, then of course you panic. So um, in any case, because I can't really confirm the source of the bleeding, I'm going really, really carefully here. And, uh, and also there's a fungal infection back there, which, so, you know, the removal of this debris is, is, is now indicated, you know, so it's not, it's not pointless, basically. You can very clearly see the retraction there, which I'll explain soon. So, yeah, so what, what we're going to do is, is basically, you know, peel this debris away as, as carefully as possible. Now, this is one of the longer videos that I've uploaded to the channel. And I thought it would be quite an interesting case anyway, because it, you know, it shows, it shows a case where, um, you know, there's a little bit of a struggle in order to remove this debris. Now, normally I would, I would go in with a hook, you know, right behind the debris and just kind of yank it out. But because there are a few complications to this case, and because I'm not entirely sure where the bleeding came from, the last thing I want to do is go in with a hook and rip it out and then bang, you know, I've, I've, you know, torn away a scab or whatever and, you know, the ear starts bleeding again, um, which to be fair, wouldn't be the, wouldn't be the end of the world. It would just really hurt and it's just unnecessary damage. And what we're trying to do here is just prize this debris away, you know, without, you know, without lacerating the skin, without causing any further trauma to the tissue. And that's the whole, you know, that's the whole point of the case, right? So if I thought that I, there was going to be massive complications and bleeding, I wouldn't have started. But, you know, weighing up the risks, 
I thought, okay, because there's a fungal infection and because the doctors asked me to do this and we want to rule out a perf, it's worth removing. So again, normally with the hook here, as I'm going behind the debris, I would be perhaps a little more confident in kind of you know, getting it out of there. But um, again, I'm just using very, very gentle movements here. Just removing little bits at a time. So, um, you know, earlier in the video, I mentioned that there was retraction and you'll see it very clearly at the end of the video. And what that means is that the eardrum or part of it is sucked backwards. So those of you, have you, you know, if you've been on a plane, imagine you're, you're just about to start descending. And as you descend in the plane, you get that kind of weird feeling, you know, pressure feeling in your ears. Um, and that's because of the difference in, in pressure in the cabin of the plane, which is increasing as you're going down in the plane. But of course, the pressure behind your eardrum is, is um, there you can very clearly see the fungus, the pressure behind your eardrum. And there is an air filled space behind your eardrum. Is, is less than that of the cabin. So slowly but surely your eardrum is kind of being sucked backwards and sucked backwards and sucked backwards. That's, that's retraction. And that's why people suck a sweet or some, you know, drink, um, drink water as they're descending in the plane. So everything looks quite red, um, but there's no active bleeding there. So we call that erythema. And I think erythros is Latin or Greek, probably Greek for, for red. So erythema red and uh, Again, that's why we call red blood cells erythrocytes. So again, just removing the last pieces of the debris. And I'm going in again with a, a hook. Now this, this may look like a cawthorn hook to you, but you'll notice that the end of the hook isn't sharp. And this is, uh, I don't think you can buy these. This was a, a hook that was specially made for me um, by a company called ChefMed. So big shout out to ChefMed. Thank you very much, guys. Um, it's just nice to have a very, very small tool that isn't, you know, pointy on the end. So you can, you know, perhaps be a bit more, um, give yourself a bit more leeway when you're going in and getting the debris. So Cawthorn number six is still definitely a hook that I use very, very often. But this prototype uh, made by Chef Med is, is the kind of hook of choice now. Crocodile forceps. Now, this is a part of the video where I really had to edit quite heavily because, you know, again, a lot of the time, I think faffing around is probably the, the wrong uh, phrase to use here, but I'm going to be honest. Yeah, there was a lot of faffing around, you know, with the crocodile forceps trying to grab onto debris and it just wasn't grabbing. And again, I would I don't normally go if I'm going to use crocodile forceps, which I don't really use that often. Um, if I do use crocodile forceps, I very rarely go deep into the ear. I very rarely go past the first third of the ear canal because the risk just greatly increases. And even the very small crocodile forceps that you can buy, they are, you know, they are huge inside of a, a small ear canal. And um, you don't have a lot of working room with crocodile forceps. So I'm just elevating this piece of dead skin. Again, this should get rid of most of the fungal debris. And again, it's just, it's just very, very difficult. So I've elevated it now, making room for the crocodile forceps. This is kind of best case scenario here. And what I'm doing here is, I remember at the time thinking, uh, being quite nervous because, you know, a lot of the time before when you elevate these, um, you know, pieces of dead skin, yeah, it can cause bleeding or at the very least it can cause hematoma, which is bleeding underneath the skin, um, which would be a bruise basically. So, you know, it's blood leaking out of blood vessels in, in, into tissue. Um, so a lot of the time, you know, if this, if this dead skin is well and truly adhered and not ready to come off, then you can cause trauma. So again, you can, you can clearly see the eardrum in the background. It's that kind of pale gray bluish skin, clearly no perforation, which is great for me and great for the patient as well. Great for the, for the general practitioner doctor. This is the outcome really that we wanted. So again, bleeding, the, the bleed, blood that came out of his ear is a bit of a mystery, but he's, I have a feeling it was probably, you know, him shoving something in his ear, to be quite honest. Uh, again, I, my, my suspicion is based on the fact that, you know, just by, you know, the law of Occam's razor, you know, the most likely um, outcome is the most likely. Is that what Occam's razor means? What I'm trying to say is that that's the most likely explanation and therefore I'm going to go with that. That's what Occam's razor means. Crocodile forceps again. And just trying to grab on to this piece of debris. I think this was probably the, you know, the fourth or fifth attempt 
to, uh, to grab onto this debris here. And again, total failure. But uh, you, I think you can see the fungus kind of on that piece of debris there, that white kind of furry stuff near the jaws of the crocodile forceps. Believe it or not, these are the smallest crocodile forceps that I could buy. These are like micro, -dra micro jaw crocodile forceps. Um, and yet they're still too large for the job. Um, just trying to get any kind of purchase on this. And will I be able to get it? Yes, I will. So it's right here that I was a bit nervous. You can see how the, I'm, I'm, I'm just pulling on the skin, but it has come away, thankfully, without any trauma, which is what we wanted. Looking again, so there's, you know, everything looks a little bit red, a little bit erythematic, but uh, that little black piece of debris we're not particularly worried about. But there's the eardrum. Now, the, the kind of, so that, the, where the arrow is pointing, that's the area where the eardrum is sucked backwards. That's the area of retraction. So there's where we started, lots of debris, fungal infection, can't really see very well, at least with a regular scope. And uh, that's the end product there. So this patient will be fine, they just need some antifungal drops. Um, I got in touch with the general practitioner doctor and discussed things. And uh, the patient's also gonna get some, at, at the first instance, they're gonna try some decongestants to, um, to make their eardrum kind of go back to to a more normal state and fix that retraction. If that doesn't work, then we'll have to refer to an ear, nose and throat doctor and, um, and see, what the, see what the crack is. But um, there we go. I hope you found that video interesting. Um, if you have any questions, leave them down in the comment section below and I will try my very best to get back to you. And of course, I will see you guys on the next video.